HIT TV PEOPLE! Okay, this is episode four. In this playlist, we are documenting this 11 bedroom HMO conversion. And it's been a little while now since I've done a video on this project. It's come to a little bit of a standstill due to finance reasons with development finance. However, we're back on it now. Um, on this particular video, I'm gonna show you how we have come up with a creative idea at the front to try and save on issues with regards to lettings because we let we actually let our own properties too so we've got HIM lettings as well as HIM building people so if you've got a house in Stoke-on-Trent that needs letting out we the people to call we have a plug there okay so what we have actually done is there's some double doors at the front so we're going to build a bit of a brick wall on the inside so that the students can have access to the bin store, but that will be actually on the front of the property. So when bin day comes, the bins are already at the front of the property. So they haven't got to remind, remember to carry it from the back all the way to the front, which can be a bit of a pain in the backside for them. This way, they can just go straight from the front, open a door and pull all the bins out. So we've made it, enough, we've made it big enough for five bins. And I've, I'm going to demonstrate how we're doing it in this video. And like I say, the idea is to try and save on issues with regards to lettings. So it's always good to have lettings in mind, even though you do the build now, because the easy it makes it, the better it is. So like, share, comment, and if you like the vibe, hit subscribe. So this is a quick update uh, where we are with regards to progress. So we've completed the loft conversion now, the floor's in. Stud work's pretty much done and we've been boarding one side so we're actually on the ground floor now uh, I think most of the structural work has been done as well so let's go and have a quick look say hi you guys hi. there's beastie and dinosaur this one's dinosaur dino dino dice okay so we dino. will have a quick look here so what we've done above me we've put in this new steel uh, we'll give that a tickle. Tickle, tickle. Tickle, tickle, baby. So what we're going to be doing here, where this consumer unit is, is we're going to be leaving the mains there. We're going to be building a big store here, halfway up, underneath this window where my finger is, and then down there. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to remake some of these gates. And then this is going to be access from outside the property because especially with students and the HMOs, we have a big problem with bins. So a top tip is if you can, try and get the bins on the outside rather than at the back because you'll find that most of the students or, or tenants won't actually carry the bins around until it gets over it gets too much of these massive massive amounts of rubbish then you start getting rats so then it gets more maintenance it costs whatever else so if you make it more convenient for them by having these here so what we're going to do is make a nice feature of it so we're going to build it build it strong across there so we can get five bins inside this space we're going to brick it up an inch later so the cold can't come through. And then we're going to actually make a seating area up here. So it's going to be, we're, going to, we're going to put some upholstery up there, some little ladders, and make it really cool. But the main, main part of that is to try and keep the bins outside so it's easier for the tenants to leave the bins outside for the bin men to try and stop problems further down the line. So, a bit of experience. Oh, right, yeah. And spin it round. We just started blocking up this wall here. So this is, this is going to become a bedroom in there. We have an ensuite here. We're going to put a suspended floor in and insulate it. So, like I say, just a quick update. So downstairs, this room's a bit of a dumping ground, so what I'll do is I'll stand here, like this, like that. Okay, so we've got the ensuite, built-in wardrobes, that's what we're doing on this one. So we haven't got to buy the furniture, and we find built-in stuff lasts a lot longer than cheap stuff that you buy. So something else you should do as well, people. Is this is our um, welfare for the lads. So we've got a sink over here. Give that tickle. So we've got running hot and cold water. Got a bit of a bench there. Plans on the wall. And behind me is all the health and safety, the sign-in book, what you should be wearing, body, body, blood, all the documents. Very boring stuff, but you need to be doing it. In the corner there, we've got an ensuite. Um, what we have got on the outside. 
there's no work yet but that's a bit of a top tip really is you should always have a welfare facility for the lads because it's not really fair for them to not have some sort of facilities somewhere warm especially in the winter months somewhere warm where they can have a nice brew and brew a bacon sandwich or whatever else it's always appreciated we tend to get a lot more uh, productivity from them as well because it's just about being nice just like us so this is the house we're going to be building an extension here moving these drains down here we should be doing that in the next couple of weeks putting the footings in there removing the steel staircase and we're building this we're going to bring this back to life we're going to do some cpr some building cpr we can get all this back working and we're going to build an extension from there to the house so all this is then going to be added as communal space and this is actually a two-story building so we're going to make a cool cinema room upstairs and some sort of quiet study area or whatever else downstairs but it's all communal space it's only an update so i can't really show you much on that because we haven't really started but when i do i will show you I'm not going to show you much down there, that's the Sally. So what we're actually going to do is remove this window behind me, put a door in. It's a top tip, this is really top tip. Try to keep the meters and whatever else away from the tenants so that they can't play. So we're going to actually put it behind here, but leave the consumer units over so the tenants can get access to it, but they can't play with the meters and the, the fuses. Don't know why they do that, they shouldn't be doing it, but people just sometimes do. We're also going to use a salad as a plant room as well. So it's going to be down here. So if you, we're actually inside this, inside. So we're going to make that into the wall. It's on your door, put it out. And then to spin it around, it then goes down the salad. We're going to have all the tanks down there. So we utilize the space in the salad because it's nice and dry. And there's a decent head height and we can get everything down there. And when maintenance come around, the tenants can't play with it because we have had issues before. Top tip again is tenants will sometimes try and repressurize boilers. They actually over, over pressurize them because then they blow all the seals and it becomes quite an expense to the investor or the owner or the landlord or whatever you would like to call yourself. So this is the first floor. So we've come up the stairs, we've, re we've reconfigured this. So another top tip. Giving all these tips away today, aren't I? Is I've redesigned the layout of this because if you go down these stairs, that corridor, it's a straight run, straight outside. So for the HMO regulations, the fire protected route is a lot better and it's a lot less complicated. If it's less complicated, you don't need as many emergency lights. So by a good design, you can save yourself some money. So another tip there. So there's a loft conversion. You can run down these stairs there and you come to this space. So this space here is the corridor for this first floor for all the bedrooms. So this is actually, this is the corridor, so all the people come down here. You can come to the top of the stairs there, run down and straight out the front door. So you've got a good protected route there. If not, we've got fire egress windows at the top of the stairs, as well as in all the bedrooms. So we are very conscious of fire and safety, but like I say, it's less emergency lights. It's less, less invasive, which saves you a bit of money. Save the pennies. This room has been ripped out, it's ready for the first fixes again. But it's nice, look, it's a nice clean site. Again, an ensuite, and we'll be building a desk there, which means the wardrobe will be going here. Um, and coincidentally, if you've been watching the playlist on this, or been watching the progress on this, this is the wall that we had to build to take the way to the purlins and the loft. So this is another bedroom, 11 beds this. So that's the door I've just walked through. There we go, there's the ensuite. Bed will be going here, fire egress window. Obviously that's being taken out, it's just there for, I'm not even sure why it's still there to fill out. It's just one of the jobs not been done just yet. And then um, another, another tip is where we've put the stairs in here, this is for the loft conversion. So you can see the treads of the stairs there. It's not been boarded off just yet. This is a studded wall here to give it the fire protection. But underneath, again, when we're managing these properties, because we do actually manage them ourselves. So HIM lettings, look us up if you need something in Stoke. Little bit of a 
a little bit of a plug there. Um, underneath the stairs, we've actually built a storage space. On every single floor, we try and do this for things like hoovers, cleaning stuff, etc. Bloody bloody blah. Because otherwise, you'll find that everywhere becomes a dumping ground and is an excuse. Because if you're a tenant in here and you can't be bothered to clean places, because you can't be bothered to go down to the bottom floor to pick up a hoover and drag it all the way upstairs, this this tends to help by making it more convenient and if you weren't going to do that that would become dead space so another top tip so this is an interesting one actually so we, we have done a lot of structural modifications to this house probably can't tell from this video but this here from there to there was a chimney breast so you can see this fresh block work here where my finger is Ooh, give that a tickle we've cut that out we've put a lintel in and if you can see this side, you'll see that, can you see the thickness? That's the chimney breast. So we've got to, we've got to bring it back in. And we're actually sitting the steel on there, which goes all the way through. And that's to take the weight of the floor, to stop it bowing in the middle with the weight. So it keeps Mr. Building Control happy. So this is the smallest room in here. It's probably about nine square meters. Down there, you've got an ensuite and there's a wardrobe but although the, the, the meterage is well is okay it's just awkward so this is going to be the wardrobe here and then there is the ensuite in like a 50 pence shape there we go i'll show you you can see how we cut the corner off the square to make like a bit of a 50 pence because this is quite a large building, we have been a bit more generous with the uh, size of the ensuites to make it a bit more, a bit more appealing to future-proof ourselves. So this is the front of the property. We've got two massive windows in here, so it's quite a decent-sized room too. So we've got a wardrobe that's going to go in there because it's an awkward shape. We've got the ensuite here. We've got a tickle. And then we've got all this space here for the bed and obviously in the desk and whatever else. Really nice big room. Let me look at the size of them. Ah. Woo! Okay. This is, to, this is the loft conversion we've got here. If you look behind me, there's another storage cupboard for things like hoovers, etc. So just to prove my point, every floor's got something. So as we turn this way, we've made a little corridor here. We've got a couple of rooms. So this room's half boarded out. It's got a nice big tall ceiling height. Put some boards on here to give a, a, a vapour barrier for the insulation. So the top tip on this is when you're designing the build or the architect's designing the build, if you're going to be putting major street steels in like we have here, so this big steel behind me, if you've seen the other ones, you'll see me struggling with balls off trying to put it in. But I've had quite a few lads to get this in. So this big steel there, we've replaced a wooden purling um, so we could take out the support because I wanted, I didn't want the brickwork here that's now new. That was actually coming all the way here, so you see where we've patched the floor in and finishing there, which, we, which meant we couldn't stand back here and try and explain this to you properly so you can see where the floor is there and patches that's where that wall was because it was supporting this steel which was a, actually a piece of timber so then that meant we could only get one room in the loft but by taking out them supports and putting two steels in so we've got a steel in this room and then a steel in that room look we've been able to create two rooms from a, from a better design from a builder's perspective by removing the structurals and putting in steels obviously it's more cost on the build but then i've gained an extra room so it's obviously better on the on the numbers but when the structural engineer is designing your steels if he doesn't do a site inspection quite often they will look at the drawings and just put this as one beam now this is really common sense and very sim simple but if you don't know you don't know is if a builder's got one beam and it's been ordered the chances are you're gonna to have to have a crane to lift it up and put it in place simple thing as you can see from this design here is that's actually two steels so you can 
you can come in. You see the gap here, and then the gap there. Give it a tickle. We like tickles. We'll have an aggressive tickle first because this is kind of a top tip. So that's two steels been bolted together. The engineer's made us a plate there. We've put a plate underneath, as you can see. So you can see that line there, and then this line here. So it's got lots and lots of bolts in it, and then the same at the top. It's got a plate on a plate, and then the other side of this is another plate. But by doing that, there's obviously we could down fit it from the inside, so we didn't have to have the hire of the crane, we didn't have to notify the highways to shut down the road <clears throat> to put one steel in. Because we can cut it in two, which we call a splice, and we can pin and knot it together. And then that way we can do it from the inside, not shut down anything, and it's a lot more manageable. So again, so we've got a room there, that's the ensuite. Got the V-Lux behind, we've got some storage space down there. We're going to make that into a bit of a wardrobe and then we've got space for a bed so like i say in this one we've managed to uh, get three rooms out of a loft conversion by doing a bit of jiggery pokery so again same again steel's in there it's bolted together this is exactly the same as next door the footprints but as you can see it's nice and airy it's really high ceiling so it's nice and high i mean i'm six foot five and even i'm underneath there so there's a good there's a good gap plenty of headspace and it'll be really good when it's done it'll be nice and pretty 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 and then this will be the biggest the biggest room in the house in the house so we've got the ensuite behind me we've got a velux there we've got all this space here and then to pan around again we've got more space we've got a second velux there and you can do whatever you want with this. We can probably put settees and all sorts in here. It's almost like a little flat. And that's the entrance. We're going to build a bit of a platform there with a handrail around it, depending on what the building inspector is going to let us get away with. So yeah, that's the uh, next little update. I hope you've got some value from it. And if you like the vibe, hit subscribe and I'll be doing another video in another couple of weeks. So see you later, folks.